Hi guys, I want to do a quick post-debate, a post-mortem as it were, a summary of a debate between an imam from Texas by the name of Kenny Bomer and me on the 22nd of September 2018. Now, on the Gin and Tonic show, Kenny Bomer from Texas challenged me to debate him on embryology in the Quran, saying that scientific contents in the Quran was true and he was not like Nadir Ahmed who by the way, had given off a pitiful performance on the identical topic only a few weeks earlier. Now, in summary, I'm going to ignore Kenny now, okay, because I just can't be bothered to handle his intellectual dishonesty, the willful ignorance, his pitiful hypocrisy, the constant deceit, the lies, and above all, his inability to process anything and to progress, to just update by researching. He can't. All he does is follow. He never thinks for himself and he never analyzes or concludes something. He only repeats. And I'm done with that. If he really is of the opinion and has the belief that there is anything verifiably correct in the Quran, he knows where to go to provide the evidence. Okay, so let me explain why I have come to this decision. Now, after Kenny had challenged me and I accepted the challenge, he ran away. He then came back and reiterated his challenge and suggested a time and date. Who did not show up after I've set everything up and was waiting for him was Kenny Bomer. So I simply shrugged it off and forgot about it. And several weeks later, he again contacted me to challenge me on this debate. I simply told him to set it up regardless of what and I would be there because I really couldn't be bothered anymore. So he tried to continue to insult and belittle me, but I just ignored his childish rants because it's childish. And I understand the desperation. It's all Kenny has. All he can do is call me anonymous. <laughs> I don't know what anonymous actually means. And label me with weird titles like self-sufficient whatever that may mean, and an Islamophobe, whatever that may mean. I mean, given his lack of factual arguments, it's all he has. You know, it's like a little girl pulling someone's hair because she's got nothing else to do with it. He finally got back to me and suggested a date and time again. And in the course of setting this up, I noticed that he had changed the title from Embryology versus Quran to Human Development in the Quran. And thinking nothing of it, I just accepted everything, only to find that Kenny Palmer once again dropped out. Okay, but this time he had a constructive suggestion, and that was to move the debate by one week. I simply accepted and left it. Now, the format I was given was 20 minutes each as opening, 10 minutes each for rebuttal, 6 questions each, with the answer being limited to 3 minutes and 10 minutes each for closing statements. Now, I personally, I would have liked more rebuttal time, since opening a can of worms is quicker than collecting them all and returning them to the can, and then limiting it to six questions was also too little in my eyes. But hey, I simply accepted it to not put yet another obstacle in the path of this. Now, something weird happened. Kenny found a fellow Muslim who was prepared to act as moderator. Instead of simply getting on with working with what there was, he suddenly wanted to change, not the channels, not the venue, but to move this into like a, a private conferencing software environment where nobody could watch and the debate would not be automatically recorded and subsequently published on YouTube, which was important for me for transparency reasons. So uh, this is where I smelled the rat. That, that he was so desperate in, in doing this. and uh, Anyway, so I declined the request to install additional software on my rig. And after a few days of futile attempts at simply forcing me into a situation, you know, with just threats and everything, it remained the way it was initially planned, except for the debate title. Now, trying to sort out what this indicated, I offered to exchange our respective talking points to enhance transparency and make it more interesting for viewers. But Kenny declined. Well, and now after the debate, we all know why. Now, when we started the debate, okay, we had a minute each, and I wanted this to get clarification regarding the wording of human development, which, as opposed to embryology, is highly ambiguous. Now, human development in the womb of the mother, milk teeth to second teeth, puberty, spiritual development, education, menopause, 
there's plenty to choose from, as opposed to the term embryology. But I found out why, because Kenny point blank refused to specify what we were going to debate. It confirmed what I thought for a while, that there is not a single honest bone in his body. He suggested I should research and present whatever I wanted, and he would do the same, even though we had initially agreed on the topic of embryology. According to Imam Kenny Bomer, this is a debate, a debate where, you know, he tried to get me into it for months, only to pull a really lame and dishonest stunt and change the topic and have two different debates, two different discussions, just so that he would not have to discuss something he knew full well is a mistake in the Quran. But this was just a reminder that he is, you know, at the end of the day, just a person with low level of morality and integrity. And no, I have never accused him of changing the title at the most, at the, at the last moment. This is another fabrication. It's dishonest to say this. Anyway, I then, well, I just asked him for a definition for embryology, but he could not provide that either. And by now, I realized he does not know what that is. He has no idea what happens and what the proceedings in the womb of a female are. He does not understand the basics, let alone the more complicated developments during the embryonic stage of a human being. He still thinks that semen is something that causes a pregnancy, even if it does not. But he is unaware of this. Well, we now started our presentations anyway, and I showed using several approaches that there is no such thing as embryology in the Quran and why it can't be there. I demonstrated that the facts dictate the four most basic essential elements and that the Quran mentions none of them, not one. It's about facts, not fakes, and the facts are not found in the Quran. So there's no embryology there. And then I showed some contradictions in the Quran regarding the creation of humans by the Islamic creator God. And then some factual errors. I showed, for example, by comparing the Quran to an established textbook on embryology, that the processes in the Quran are just as wrong as the materials described from which humans are supposed to be created from. But the one element that all life is based on, carbon, is not mentioned. So everything in the Quran regarding human development in the womb is wrong, a mistake. Next it was Kenny's turn. I, I, was, I was totally shocked. And as I had prophesied, of course, he went into this ritualistic mumbling of some incantations before the actual beginning of his presentation. Now, remember, he had no points or arguments, so he only preached, delivered something akin to a Friday sermon. I don't know how many times he pointed out the vagueness of the Quran, simply saying it draws our attention to whatever, to something, instead of simply making a statement. He rambled on and on talking about signs, not facts. And this is signs, like a signaling point, not facts. And just read his script much too fast and without real comprehension. He demonstrated his state of delusion, immersing himself in his false sense of supremacy and feeling only contempt for those who don't believe what he believes. He does not comprehend those human beings who are normal and can get through the day without divine supervision. And he shows it. He misrepresents and simply fabricates stuff to make himself feel better. What I consider to be weak and naive. What, what was quite comical is when he recited the Quran, and this is during his opening statement, during a debate. Okay? And there he hit on some sentences I have ridiculed in my series on illogical ideas in the Quran. But our Kenny does not see the flaws, or maybe just does not want to see them. And only towards the end of his rant, his monologue, he went and picked up the long refuted pamphlet, Aira and, and um, uh, Hamza Tsotsis, that they had published almost a decade ago, where the contents was completely destroyed by non-Muslims. So they had to retract it. Why would Kenny let intellectual honesty stand in the way of a perfectly good lie? What, what he perceives as a valid argument. 
probably banking on most people having forgotten the entire proceedings at the time. Now, I had anticipated this, and I mentioned this in my opening statement. So I pointed it out again in my 10-minute rebuttal, and I also pointed out some other inconsistencies I could make out in his opening sermon when using this ancient old argument. And I did not go sentence by sentence where every sentence was wrong, but I just left it as a long refuted claim, a blatant lie in much ado about nothing where everything was taken apart. So at 50 minutes into the debate, um, he has, and he's doing this remarkable statement. So, so the, the blood, blood clot, clot once, again, once again, from the moment of inception, the, of the human begins to develop and begins to draw nutrients from the mother in the womb. And this is the kind of gibberish we are presented with in a debate by Kenny Boma. No, no blood clot is part of any human development in the womb. That is a mistake in the Quran. A moment of inception is double speak, since inception is already a temporal description and conception the activity. An embryo does not draw anything. All these descriptions you find in the Quran are mistakes. An embryo does not cling, does not bite, does not suck, or anything described in the Quran. His claim that semen contains 23 chromosomes had been stitches. There you go, you heard it from the expert. It is embarrassing. The word chromosome pairs inspires our embryologist to seize on the word pair and find another mistake in the Quran where everything is created in pairs. It's factually incorrect, okay? Now, Kenny's rebuttal of my presentation was based on his ignorance and lack of education. He is incapable of thinking and learning and can only repeat what others tell him something says or means or is intended to mean. And, okay, this is the central point. that This is what I want to point out here. Kenny clearly does not understand what a sperm cell, a gamete, actually is. He does not understand IVF, the in vitro or artificial insemination. He does not understand what a haploid is and is under the impression that whatever a male ejaculates can lead to a pregnancy. Which, come on, of course it's incorrect. But he does not understand that semen does not necessarily contain sperm cells and constantly tells me I need to learn about embryology. That's how pathetic this is. He tried to quote something out of, out of, well, out of this book, but ran out of time. Whatever it was, I just took a look because I was curious what, what book he was trying to quote here. We see the same identical requirements at the beginning, not mentioned in the Quran. Kenny loses out once again. Every single book says the same thing. The Quran does not. So he did not understand any of the mistakes I pointed out in the Quran. He simply can't grasp that while an aircraft contains and requires a lot of air, it is not made from air. Just as an organic life form might contain water in the cells it is made up from, to varying degrees, but it is not made only from water, as is claimed in the Quran in three different sentences. Are my teeth made from water? Is his brain made from water? Can he change the word in the Quran from created from water to created and containing something like 50% water? Trying to correct his God by showing that he made a mistake and doesn't know what is going on. But then he contradicts himself, claiming that everything in existence is made from water. Everything in existence? Well, in the Quran, Adam and Jesus are made from dust. So now what? Oh dear. Oh, I can't believe it. Kenny is, he's so totally focused on really bad apologetics where, for example, remember the four elements initially required to kick off embryology? Well, he simply reduces that to two elements, the male and the female liquids. <laughs> Whatever that may mean. He completely loses the plot when he claims that everything, like water, is created out of two elements and it pairs. And then he manages to top that simply <laughs> copying the long refuted nonsense from Hamza's sources, um, claiming that Nutfa means a single entity out of a bigger group. 
then reduces that entity to semen, where he thinks a single entity is one sperm cell, i.e. a male gamete, the spermatozoon. He realizes this is wrong and quickly includes the one oocyte out of many, where are only minutes ago pointed out that there is a huge difference in the number of male and female gametes. And now he goes and contradicts himself once again and claims that Nutfa is something entirely different, namely a mingled substance. Uh, well, I mean, that is a completely meaningless expression and suddenly makes the word into a zygote. So one word is spermatozoom, oozite and zygote all at the same time and whenever you need it to be what you want it to be and how you want it to be. <laughs> wow. That he now contradicts himself again, what's not surprising to me. Because he suddenly claims once again that we were all created from a single drop of sperm, whatever that may be, where only a moment ago it was still a zygote. <laughs> this guy is broken. And then, in the refutation paper, the topic of Nutfa being misrepresented as part of something and ending up as a sperm, ovum and zygote, is refuted on 30 pages in-depth and exhaustive, so there is no need for me to repeat all of that. Kenny is simply intellectually dishonest and doesn't care that he is in fact lying through his teeth, and yet has the audacity to claim that there are embryologists today who agree with what the Quran says. What utter nonsense! During the following question time, where each of us was allowed to ask six questions, Kenny was not able to answer a single question I had. I don't know if I need to explain this, but let me do this anyway. If I ask, what does it mean to Kenny when he claims humans are made from water? And, and, and he says, A, I need to go to some web page somewhere. And B, someone says we contain 50% or whatever percent water. Then this is not an answer to the question I asked. I had stated that it's quite obvious we are not made from water. But this is what the Quran states. And Kenny agrees that the Quran is wrong, but will not say this, simply dodging the question. So I tried to pin him down, but he evaded and would not answer the question, even though I repeated it several times. He simply claimed, I did not understand my own question, expanding the nonsense by stating that everything in existence is created from water. Like the sun, created from water, eh? Uh, this is total nonsense, absolute rubbish. His answer to my second question was, yeah, you guessed it, that I don't know what I'm asking. I asked whether the Quran contains a rendition of embryology, not whether the word is there, but the interpretation or aversion. And once again, the answer is still outstanding. Even though we all know that the Quran does not and does not even come close to anything in embryology. I explained this earlier, but Kenny is not honest enough to state the obvious. I then tried to dig a bit deeper and see if Kenny actually knows what he's doing, and again exposed his ignorance. He does not know what Nutfa is and where it is explained. Now, if we go to the much ado about nothing, we see that Nutfa is used 12 times in the Quran and is man created from Nutfa. And then if we go to Lane's lexicon, we see that sperma or seed of a man or a woman. That is what nutfa is supposed to mean. In Lisan al-Arab, it's a little bit different there. It's a little water, a little water remaining in a water tube, a little water remaining in a bucket. And in a poem, it is used as a small quantity of wine that is, you know, remaining in the wineskin. So it's always the same thing. So Kenny's claims are simply not true and pure fabrication. But how would you ask for the source of a claim during a debate? It's the wrong platform. So it's a bit stupid to bring this up. His next attempt at an answer broke down when I tried to understand what he was claiming, where his God, well, his creator God, creates humans from a mingled substance, without any indication what mingled is and what it is that is mingled, in addition to water, clay, dust, blood, da, 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 and all the other materials. Hmm. My next, the fifth question was about anything, anything, being able to change his mind. And his answer was to address me. Now, I know he hates me profusely, but why not answer my question? And this reply provides a glimpse into the psyche of this person. 
a highly stressed person, full of doubt and self-pity, paranoid about being constantly attacked and having to prove himself, and he turned into a bully. He's found a hold in magical incantations and a submission to a being he can't bully, and is unquestionably superior, something he will not admit about any other human being. So I, I actually started enjoying this, this little um, excursion and, and this, this question and answer game, um, you know, to get a bit closer to what he actually understood regarding embryonic development. But unfortunately, I was stopped by the moderator who could probably notice that Kenny was failing badly here. And his answer to my last question was indeed telling. It showed he had no idea what was going on and only had the Quran and the faulty description, which is probably easier to imagine, but false. Now, Kenny's questions were, okay, well, I, they were pretty useless, seeing that I just explained everything all in detail. What shocked me was his level of dishonesty, where I had just said, no, it was wrong, and he stated that I had just said it was correct. That is truly amazing. We are created based on carbon and we contain cells which contain in turn some water. This is not what the Quran says. The Quran says we are created from water and that is wrong. Okay, so apparently my, my opponent does agree that based on what this physician states, that we are indeed created from water. Unbelievable. So anyway, in the end, we just wrapped it up. And when the debate itself was over, I tried to keep Kenny there to have a conversation, ah, but he ran. In summary, Kenny only managed to criticize my person. And, you know, and he simply lacked the substance to actually refute the factual arguments I brought up. It was a lackluster, pretty boring affair with Kenny demonstrating that he's a deluded bigot who could not even answer my question if there was anything that would be able to change his mind regarding divine creationism versus natural embryology. And that would have interested me. So it's pretty frustrating to try and have a talk with Kenny because he lacks any scientific education and can only interrupt and display his ignorance. Now, I actually learned something from the debate with Nadia Ahmed, who is equally uneducated and bigoted, you know, just like Kenny. But I could pick up absolutely nothing here with, with Kenny, which is an, that's always a pity, right? Kenny is utterly and totally deluded, does not comprehend anything outside his ideology and his doctrine. If I use the word knife, this can be a bread knife, a steak knife, a fish knife, etc. So I think we can all agree simply saying knife in any situation without a context shows that the word itself is ambiguous. But if I say I used a knife to fly to Mars, not only is the word ambiguous, it is also factually wrong because there is no context in which you can use a knife to fly to Mars. But not everything that is ambiguous is also automatically wrong and vice versa. But Kenny doesn't understand this. In his world, if you talk a lot, you might just mention something correct, or almost correct, or being correct if you stretch it somehow afterwards. If you provide a wrong answer, one which is lengthy, then you have answered and provided a lengthy explanation, even if, for a normal person like me, everything was wrong. So we have two very different approaches to intellectual honesty here. In all, I would say Kenny has received a spanking, incapable of bringing up anything of substance or refuting anything I presented. But, you know, just like after he received a spanking uh, at the hands of uh, Christian Prince, I think it was, I suspect his existence in a bubble will protect him from this insight and from this realization. So there you go. Thanks. Talk to you next time. Bye for now.